Hi, and welcome to my channel, Laura's Library Card. So today I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible through this video. Uh, it will start with a little chat, a check-in, and then I'm going to discuss 2022 goals and how I did or did not do. And then I'm going to jump to the crunchy crunchy stats for 2022. Check out timestamps below if you want to jump around. So yeah, a quick check-in, chat, hello, I'm alive. Where the hell have you been, Lilka? <laughs> um, I've just been very busy at the end of the year, at the end of 2022, uh, just in my personal life and my work life. And uh, yeah, so I'm here. I may or may not be making content in 2023. We shall see. But yeah, I kind of got in a little bit of a slump regarding making content. Uh, and as I just hinted, I've been debating about whether or not I even want to continue making content at all for this channel short form content. Everyone knows I don't know when to shut up. So that's why I've never made a TikTok. But yeah, I, I, I guess I'm good. Just maybe don't expect some regularly scheduled content in 2023. But overall, I felt like 2022 uh, was pretty meh for me. Uh, there were a few bright spots overall, uh, but there, you know, you know, a couple good books sprinkled throughout, but there were a lot of sort of middle of the road and a few stinkers too. So, you know, I didn't really feel like there were any like super strong standout books, nor super strong standout reading experiences. So, you know, we, we shall see what 2023 shall bring. But yeah, those are some of my overall thoughts. And just to let you know, I'm alive. So let's just dive right into uh, the whole goals discussion. So I put out a 2022 goals video and I forgot that it even existed until uh, not that long ago. And so let's review, shall we? I did list a lot of authors and a couple of books that were anticipated for the that were going to be released in 2022. Um, I'm not going to go through every single one, but I did read Book Lovers and I did read Hook, Line and Sinker, which I had intended to do so. Um, I did continue to I did read Sweat and Soap, uh, three out of three volumes anyway. Um, and I did read Chloe Lise, which was a big win. That was one of the, the good parts of the year. And I also did read a couple of the authors that I mentioned uh, in that video. And, you know, just kind of like one or two from each of the, uh, you know, from a couple of the authors. But I listed like 15 authors and I read about six of them. So, you know, that seems about par for the course. Um, one of the things I said was I hoped to read more thrillers in 2022, and I did not. I actually read fewer thrillers, uh, but I'm in the mood for them right now. So here's hoping to 2023, right? Um, I also said I wanted to read more nonfiction. I read less nonfiction. Now, I will say that I DNF'd multiple nonfiction titles this year, so I felt like that was part of the issue maybe I'm not sure I definitely did not prioritize nonfiction you know and I would like to do better about that now I did say that I wanted to DNF more and I did in 2021 I DNF'd four titles and in 2022 I DNF'd 15 titles so I think that that's great for me especially since I said I was reading some stinkers you know so you gotta get rid of those um I also said I wanted to read more manga which I did I read 15 volumes of manga throughout the year and I also hoped to participate in more readathons. I don't know about more readathons, but I did definitely participate in multiple readathons, both as host, because I did two rounds of the Love in the Night readathon, and uh, as a participant for a multiple readathons. So I feel like that was good. Uh, one of my main goals, though, that I talked about in that video was that I just wanted to have more fun uh, and enjoy my channel and my content and my reading more. And um, like I said, I felt like 2022 was pretty pretty middle of the road. So I'm not so sure that I accomplished that goal. But you know, like, yeah, like some some good, some bad, you know, good, bad and the ugly, right. Um, and the other thing that I commented on was that I was really hoping to sort of take more time to ruminate on my books and take time to like fully, you know, ingest them and, and sit with them for a little bit. I don't really feel like I did that either. So you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, I have not made, oh, I did, I did achieve my Goodreads goal of reading at least 100 books. I did finish 128 titles for 2022. Uh, more on that in the stats 
crunchy part. Uh, but yeah, with regards to 2023, I'm not going to set nearly so many goals or mention some nearly so many specific titles and authors uh, as I did last year. Basically, um, I did set my Goodreads goal to 100. I feel like that is achievable. I have achieved 100 plus books in the last like four or five years, or maybe more than that. So I felt like 100 was totally doable. Um, and yeah, I feel like most of what I said for 2022 still applies. Uh, but basically, my main three goals for 2023 um, that are more nebulous and not the hard and fast, you know, goal is I want to mood read more. I feel like, um, I feel like when I lay out a specific TBR and specific, specifically mention particular books and they're fulfilling X prompt or Y prompt, it suddenly becomes a job or a chore to try to like read that book. And I just, even if it's something I really wanted to get to, it frequently suddenly seems to lose some of that shine. So I want to mood read more. Um, and that's a goal for 2023. I also sort of along the same lines want to read more of what I consider my own, like highly anticipated titles. There are ones that I there are books that I add to my TBR that I'm like, yeah, I want to read this. And then there are other books I read where I'm like, ooh, I really want to read this. And then frequently those ones Sometimes there are books that are on my TBR that I keep hearing more and more about and therefore it moves higher up my list because I keep hearing more buzz about it. So along the same vein of mood, mood reading, I want to read books that I am actually really genuinely excited about and I want to prioritize those. So that's my second goal. And my third goal is I want to diversify my reads, not only in the, you know, continue maintaining, even though I didn't really track this, um, the diversity amongst authors and regions and I definitely need to read more translated fiction definitely need to diversify like race and ethnicity uh, and probably sexuality of my authors but I want to diversify my genre of reading because I feel like as I was going through the books that I read in 2022 I felt like the ones that sort of most stuck out to me or a number of the ones that I felt were a surprise or were good uh, were ones that were not in genres that I typically tend to read the most of so I think that they just felt like a real fresh of breath air, fresh breath of air, breath of fresh air. Woof, words are hard. Um, and so I feel like they kind of perhaps struck me more strongly just because I felt like it was something new and different. So those are some of my goals for 2023. And yeah, let's dive right into the 2022 stats. We'll just try to rapid fire this. So let me refer to my handy dandy little notebook here. Okay, so at the end of the year, I had finished 128 titles and I had DNF'd 15 titles. Uh, 117, which is 91% of those titles that I finished were new to me and I did do 11 rereads throughout 2022. For a grand total of 40,844 pages, which is very good, um, but is actually, both of, all of these numbers are just a hair lower than last year, I believe. For 2021, I finished 129 books and it was about 4,000 more pages. So I definitely must have read shorter titles in 2022. Um, my average rating, which I don't really talk about much on my channel, but I have an express, you know, a spreadsheet that I do rate every book. Um, and I don't tend to go back and modify those. They're kind of like the rating I gave at the time of reading. Um, my average rating for this year was 3.44. I will put a spread here, a bar graph on the on screen of the distribution of my reads. And um, I think you can see that, you know, while it is good that I'm reading things that I like overall, generally, I, I want more four and five star reads. I just, I want to enjoy what I read even more than what I currently am. And honestly, this is actually down a little bit. I could look back at 2021. My average for 2021 was 3.54. So it actually went down a whole tenth of a star. But uh, yeah, so the, the breakdown of the format that I read my books on was 45 titles I read on audiobook, 69 <laughs> titles I read through digital or ebook or Kindle Unlimited. I think Kindle, Kindle Unlimited really functioned to boost that. Also, the manga, most of the manga I read was a digital sort of hoopla kind of format. So I counted that there. So those were, that was the increase there. Uh, and that, me that means that 14 of the titles that I read, I read physically, um, that way. Uh, I don't think I read anything that I owned this whole year. I think everything was either Kindle Unlimited or library, but I didn't directly track that. So don't quote me. And also that's not true for a couple of rereads. So, you know, 
there you go. I will also put here a breakdown of my genres, but not a surprise that my highest read genre was romance coming in at 75 books. And then the second highest was just sort of general fiction. Uh, I, I'm in multiple book clubs in real life. So yeah, I just kind of lumped a bunch of stuff together there under fiction. Uh, shortly followed beh behind manga, which is just because I read like the entire Water Dragon's Bride series, which was like 11 volumes right there, you know, so yeah. Uh, I did read 10 science fantasy slash science fiction slash fantasy titles and um, let's see, six mysteries slash, slash thrillers slash suspense and four nonfiction titles. Four definitely could be better. Uh, interestingly for me, I wanted to kind of do a further breakdown for my romance and it was not a surprise to me at all that my top two subgenres of romance were contemporary coming in at 38%, 29 titles, and almost exactly the same were monster slash alien, which I just kind of lumped together, um, romances at 28, which was 37%. And then I had just a few, just a smattering of paranormal romance and a few uh, fantasy romance actually, which is a subgenre I would like to explore more of in 2023 and just a couple historical novels in there as well. So those were all of the crunchy numbers at, and the last section that I'm going to talk about is sort of like a superlatives. Um, I'm not going to discuss anything about these books. Uh, I don't even think I'm gonna, I don't even have the authors listed here. So I'm just gonna name some titles and I encourage you to either avoid or look up at your own peril. So uh, let's go ahead and start with, we're gonna do worse. <laughs> I had, uh huh, I had a couple real stinkers this year. So um, I'm gonna name three titles here. And the, some of the worst books that I read this year were Mr. Bad Influence. Mm -hmm. uh, Talking to Strangers, which was a nonfiction title that I strongly disliked. And surprisingly, I Married a Merman, which was a real uh, stab to the heart considering I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the three books in the series before that one. So that one which just felt like a real betrayal right there. Uh, as for the sort of best slash top books of the year, I just picked a few titles that stood out to me. Um, I chose for nonfiction a title, Seek You. And for any sort of sequential art, including all the manga, I did go with Heartstopper Volume 2, which I read for the first time in 2022. And for the science fiction, yeah, science fiction fantasy uh, section, I chose Recursion as my favorite there. And then in Romance, it was very hard to choose just one title. So I will say that I really, really enjoyed Juliet Cross she's one of my favorite uh, favorite authors, Chloe Lise, and surprisingly, Lily Main, who I read a number of Kindle Unlimited romances from. But I am, I did decide that the winning romance title for the year for me goes to A Heart of Blood and Ashes, which was kind of a surprise, but it was a very strong book. Um, I will say that I, I of all the rereads that I read, uh, I will say Daughter of the Forest is what was my top favorite there, uh, which is not a surprise considering that is one of my literal top favorite books of all time. So uh, it was a pleasure to reread Daughter of the Forest. Now for the honorable mentions before I wrap this video up and log, you know, sign right out. Uh, honorable mentions are Real by Kennedy Ryan and Morning Glory Milking Farm, actually. Uh, the Rose Code, which was kind of a surprise for a book club, but I was captivated the whole time. Uh, Taste of Golden Iron. I actually did a whole review video on this, I think, because it was a Nick Alley arc and it was also a top contender for a top spot of romances here. Legends and Lattes. I discuss the entire plot, but not a ton of my feelings about it in uh, its own individual video, but Legends and Lattes is cozy and wonderful and made me want to play more D&D, which is the other major passion in my life, <laughs> major hobby in my life. And then I also wanted to mention This Is How You Lose the Time War, which was a science fiction fantasy, science fiction title that uh, was a very strong standout and was very different and interesting, and I would love to reread it. So, those are all my crunchy stats for 2022. Those are some of my review of 2022 goals and a few goals for 2023. Uh, those are superlatives. I feel like I just crammed all of my end of year content that a lot of people are making lots of videos of of into just like one 15 minute long thing. So yeah. Um, 
let me know down below what one of your favorite books or one of your worst least favorite books of 2022 was or leave me just like a like smiley face emoji or tell me what you're excited for for 2023 or just say hi or whatever I uh would love to see some love because this might be my last video ever I mean that sounds like so dramatic and like kind of like I don't know clickbaity or something I don't know but uh yeah I don't know it's just something that I have been really considering for a while is it does does YouTube bring me joy and the answer is like me eh. so just wanted to have this out there so I could wrap up all of 2022 and this video would exist and anybody who was interested would be able to see sort of how I ended up doing in the year. And so yeah, thanks so much for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe I guess if you want to and thank you so much for watching. Bye!